Hey everyone, welcome back. In this ISTQB foundation exam questions and answers video, I'm going to cover the last six questions of this particular sample exam set along with the detailed explanation for those questions, which will be really helpful for you in clearing and understanding these questions and then clearing your ISTQB CTFL version 4 exam. Okay, so question number first of this particular video is A21. Which of the following is true regarding the test pyramid okay so true regarding test pyramid so let's go through these four options when we have to select one option now test pyramid if you would have seen my videos on ISTQB or even manual testing you will understand that test pyramid is something like this and the emphasis of test pyramid is to focus less on the UI so as, as you move further you focus less on the UI testing and automation focus more on the you know unit and API layer okay so that's the purpose of or, or basically what exactly the test pyramid pyramid says all about so based on that let's see what is the correct uh, option so it emphasizes having more having far more tests at lower test level right so you'll see that as and we move further we need to have less number of test cases reliance on the ui and more as we move at the bottom right so that looks very close it emphasizes having more far more tests at the lower test levels right so at the lower test levels basically at the unit level if you talk about we should be having more test cases so this is the correct answer but let's eliminate others and then conclude that this is the correct answer it suggests that each low level test checks are large part of the functionality that's not correct that's baseless statement it describes distribution of test types across sdlc that's also baseless statement it has no impact on the construction of automated tests that's also incorrect right correct answer is a it emphasizes having far more tests at lower test level which is clearly shown here as part of this pyramid so the correct answer is a which is emphasis is more emphasis on the test at lower test level okay now moving to the next one which is 22 during risk analysis the team considered the following risk the system allows too high a discount for a customer okay so this is the risk that the team has considered the team eliminated the risk impact to be very high oh, sorry the team estimated the risk to be very high so the risk is very high that's the estimate what can one say about the risk likelihood okay so the risk impact they have estimated to be very high and they are asking what we can conclude or we can say about the likelihood of this particular risk okay so we have to select one option let's read through these one by one it is also very high high risk impact always implies high risk likelihood that's absolutely incorrect high risk doesn't mean high likelihood okay high risk likelihood they are not correlated okay it is very low high risk impact always implies low risk likelihood again the opposite of that and that's also incorrect okay one cannot say anything about risk likelihood risk impact Act and risk likelihood are independent absolutely correct okay so risk impact and likelihood you cannot identify that if the impact is very high the likelihood of the occurrence of the risk is also very high right because likelihood is how likely the risk is going to happen or, or possibility of the risk to occur okay so both are different impact could be low or high but then what is the likelihood is not correlated with the impact at all so c is the correct option we'll go quickly with the d and eliminate that as well risk likelihood is not important with such high risk impact one does not need to define it baseless so c is the correct answer okay now moving to the next one which is third question of this particular video the following list contains risks that have been identified for a new software product to be developed so these are some of the risks that have been identified now if you go below before we read we what what exactly they are asking which of them are project risks okay now we know that there are product risks 
and project risks risks so we have to identify which one of them are project risks now management moves two experienced testers to another project okay so this is a project risks risk why because two experienced testers are moving from a project to other project right so absolutely this is the correct option we have to now segregate which one is the product risk and which one is the project risk now system the second one system does not comply with functional safety standard now here they are saying product the system okay this is a product so this is a product risk this is not a project risk okay so we can eliminate that system response time exceeds user requirements again system right so again this is a product risk not a project risk okay anything related to software performance functionality compliance is a product risk anything related to timeline people tester project activities is a project risk okay so we have found first one one here now fourth one says stakeholders have inaccurate expectations again this is more of project and stakeholder expectation so yes this is a project risk right because this has nothing to do with the product that you are building the software that you are building okay then disabled people have problem when using the system again system again the software and people using that particular software having problems that's again issue or risk with the product so it's a product risk so the correct option that we figured out is 1 and 4 and with just one option that we figured out we could have excluded two options right so we can so we know that if we have figured out this is a project risk so one is only in two options a and c so we know we can cross out b and d right that that's how we you use the elimination strategy so straight away you cross out b and d and now you just have to figure out out of a and c which ones are the correct right so one you know is correct and then you go with the fourth and third okay and if on the third you see that you know this system response time is absolutely incorrect and fourth was correct then straight away you know you concluded this right so you could have saved a lot of time with this ex elimination uh, elimination strategy once you found one accurate answer that you are 100 percent sure you remove others and then you look for other options so here only three and four were there you just go with three and four and see that which one is the best fit and you mark that particular option and then quickly browse through the other options to be 100% sure about the answer okay so a is the correct answer for this particular question now moving to the next one which is the which which of the following is an example of how product risk analysis influences thoroughness and scope of testing now they are asking how product risk analysis influences thoroughness and scope of testing right so we have to go through each of these and and then see which one of these influences thoroughness based on the product risk analysis we have to select just one option so test manager monitors and reports the level of all known risk on a daily basis so the stakeholders can make an informed decision on the release date that's not how product risk analysis influences thoroughness and scope of testing here it is about how thorough and what will be the scope of your testing based on the risk analysis this is not at all related to the thoroughness this is more of test manager reporting those risk on a daily basis so we can eliminate that one of the uh, one of the identified risks was a lack of support of open source databases so the team decided to integrate the system with an open source database right that's again not about the thoroughness of testing right so this is more of lack of support of the open source databases so they decided to integrate the system with an open source database so this is also incorrect we can eliminate that now the third option during the quantitative risk analysis the team estimated the total level of all, all identified risk and reported it as total residual risk before testing okay now based on the quantitative risk analysis the team estimated total level of uh, all identified risk and then reported it as a total residual risk before testing that's again not defining or explaining anything about thoroughness and scope of testing so we can eliminate that as well so obviously we are left with d option let's read that and be 100 percent sure that this is about thoroughness and scope so risk assessment revealed a very high level of performance risk okay which is again a product risk right performance risk so it was decided to perform detailed performance efficiency testing early in the sdlc which is basically clearly indicating the scope 
that we have to do performance and the thoroughness with the detailed performance efficiency, right? So it influences this particular risk assessment influences the thoroughness and scope. So that's why D is the correct answer for this particular question. Okay, so now moving to the next one, which is A25, which is uh, the fifth question of this particular video, which two of the following options are common metrics used for reporting on the quality level of the test object. Okay, so the quality level, common metrics used to report the quality level of the test object. So let's go one by one. We have to select two options. You have to make sure that whatever you see below as well. So if it says two, you have to make sure you select two options for that particular question. So let's go one by one. Number of defects found during the system testing. Okay, so this is one of the metrics. Let's mark it and then we'll eliminate and then conclude that those two options are 100% correct. So test effort on test design divided by number of the design test cases. That's absolutely not a metric that will that you'll use to report on quality level of the test object, right? So this is we can strike that out. Total effort of test design divided by number of design test cases is not absolutely going to tell you anything about the quality level. Okay, this is more of a how many test cases have been designed. Right. Number of executed test procedures. That's also not going to give you any information because say for example you have thousand test procedures to execute test cases to execute. If you have executed 800 what sort of quality level or uh, that that those uh, that executed just execution number is not going to give you any detail around that. Okay. If you include more detail around pass fail then that that's a separate story but just the number of executed test procedures is not going to give you any quality level on the test object so that you can strike that as well then the d is number of defects found divided by the size of work product that's also very close this is correct okay so we'll just keep a dot on that and then time needed to repair a defect absolutely not doesn't go into the quality it's not a matrix that how much time has been taken to fix a defect that's a developer activity to fix a defect so that's absolutely incorrect and now we are left with a and d which are absolutely clear metrics used to report on the quality level so number of defects first thing how many defects have been found that indicates what is the quality level of the test object right clearly indicates so this is correct and number of defects found divided by size of the work product that is also a quality quality metric that will give you a indication of the quality level right so these two are the a and d are the correct option for question number a25 now the last question of this particular sample exam set which of the following pieces of information contained in a test progress report is the least useful for business representatives least useful right and here least useful for whom for business representatives okay so test progress report so let's see what are the options and we just have to select one option so impediments to testing branch coverage achieved test progress new risks within the test cycle right so now for business representatives if you are reporting test progress report and you are not putting impediments in testing that's not going to basically this has to be there right so we know that this is important this is useful for business representative so we have to choose the least useful so this is not the correct answer so we have to choose the least useful info for business representative in test progress report test progress report you are sending and you are you definitely have to put test progress right so this is also out branch coverage achieved this is the answer but let's eliminate the last one as well new risks within the test cycle if any new risk are introduced in the test cycle that should also go into test progress re report that's not least useful so if you are putting branch coverage achieved okay that's basically the least useful info for business representative what branch coverage you, you have achieved that's the least important or least useful info for business representative in the test progress report but all three others are the useful one they are not least useful they are the most useful info to send in the test progress report for for the business representatives okay so that's last question of this particular exam set in the next video i'll cover another five questions from new sample exam which will definitely help you to understand these questions apply the strategies and learn detail about the istqb foundation version 4 exam and eventually if you put good effort and learn you will be able to clear the exam very so that's all for this video thank you very much see you in the next one